everyone. Today I would like to show you how you can use the ditch module in Aerostream with JavaScript. Although this isn't a new feature of Aerostream JavaScript 0.3.0, um, it has been improved in the latest release and um, uh, it has also been extended to allow custom DIT resolvers and registers to be registered. Um, and it's become really useful now that we have support for JSON-LD credentials. I'm going to make a separate video on how to issue JSON-LD credentials, but you need to be able to create DITs um, um, to issue JSON-LD credentials. So in this uh, video, I'll cover how do you resolve DITs using Aerostream JavaScript and how do you create DITs using Aerostream JavaScript. So I've created a very simple agent setup here. Um, I set up an agent with the agent dependencies. I give it the label and a wallet config and I initialize the agent. So we're now ready to use the agent. Um, um, on the agent, we have a DIT module that allows us to um, um, create, deactivate, resolve, and update DIT. Um, and although the update and uh, deactivate methods haven't been implemented uh, for most methods, the create and uh, resolve have been. Um, so um, the interfaces that we use in Aerostream JavaScript have mostly been uh, based on the specs defined uh, at diff and W3C for DIT resolving and DIT registration. And we try to adhere to that interface as much as possible. So if you're familiar with those specifications, the API we use in Aerostream and JavaScript should look familiar to you. Um, so let's first start by resolving a DIT. Um, the um, DIT methods that are standard uh, uh, supported in AFJ for resolving is DIT web, DIT soft, DIT key, and DIT peer. Um, so let's start resolving a DIT web DIT. Um, so I've created a very simple uh, uh, DIT web DIT on uh, DIT.animo.id. Um, and um, I can call um, uh, Dit results await agent dit resolve dit web dit dot animo dot id and if I now console dot log uh, the dit result value and I run um, um, the the script we can see in the output here um, we have a dit document uh, with a context and an id dit web animo dot id um, and there's not much in it. That's as you can see, if we go to uh, uh, the DIT itself, which is hosted uh, according to the, uh, the, the DIT web uh, specification on dit.animo.id.wellknown slash dit.json. It's just an ID. It doesn't contain anything, but it just shows how the DIT resolver uh, can resolve uh, uh, DITs in Aerostream with JavaScript. Uh, we could, for example, also um, resolve uh, if we do uh, resolve the date from uh, Twinsic.id, um, we can run the same script um, and um, it will resolve to the date. So we can see we this is a bit more, uh, this contains actually keys because um, uh, uh, it contains a verification method and the keys is linked in the assertion method and this is the date document. So, um, if we actually go to um, uh, the browser again, and instead uh, we go to intrinsic.id and we resolve it, uh, you can see the uh, DIT document is present uh, in here. So that's how the DIT resolver uh, works in Aerostream with JavaScript. The DIT result um, is an object and it contains a DIT document, DIT document metadata and DIT resolution metadata. Um, this differs based on the, um, the type of uh, DIT method you resolve. So the DIT document metadata for DIT soft DITs, it could contain the ledger transaction itself. So you can, can see more of the underlying metadata uh, of which the DIT document was generated. DIT resolution metadata will, for example, contain um, uh, the MIME type. So whether it was a, um, um, a JSON-LD um, uh, document, as you can see, um in here so that's the content type application slash dit uh, plus json um the next up is um the dit registration um this is a bit more complex because uh, resolving a dit is is 
uh, way more simple. You just give a DIT and you get back a DIT document. For creating a DIT, we need to make sure there's uh, uh, keys and we need to publish it somewhere. Uh, for now, I'll, I'll keep it simple and we're going to register a DIT key DIT. Um, so I can use the same H and DITs module. I can do create and pass several options here. So it's the method, the option, secret data, DIT document, and the DIT. Um, this is not typed at the moment, or like it's generically typed for all DIT methods, but uh, each DIT method can be quite different in which options you need to provide um, to register the DIT. Um, uh, for this, we have an interface uh, uh, um, uh, uh, for each type. So in this case, we want to create a DIT key DIT. So we have the key DIT um, create options. And now as you can see it will squiggle and it say like, uh, uh, hey, this is not assignable. Um, first, we need to provide a method. Well, that needs to be key because we're creating a DIT key. Um, and we need to provide options. Uh, and this type, in this case, we need to provide the key type. The key type is um, whatever we would like it to be. Um, for now, I'll go ahead and create an ED24519 um, DIT. Um, and that's all we need to do for the DIT key. This is a very simple one because the DIT key DIT isn't registered on a ledger, so we don't need to interact with it and it can only contain a single key. Um, so once we have done that, we get the uh, DIT result. And if I now um, console.log that DIT result and rerun the script, um, we can see it's finished. We have a, a DIT and it has logged the DIT document. Um, so great, we've created a DIT document. And we can then also um, um, uh, resolve this same DIT document. So we do uh, agent DIT uh, resolve and we do the DIT result dot DIT state dot DIT. Um, so uh, uh, we can resolve it. And um, if we now log the resolve result and run the script again, um, it will first create a DIT and then it will print the DIT document that it resolved. So we've created an ED25519 DIT key. It will automatically add an X24519 um, key to it and um, provided everything. Um, I can now start using this DIT. It is also stored in the agent that this DIT is created by us and we can um, um, use it, for example, to issue json -LD credential. Um, we're also working on uh, making it possible to create out-of-band invitations using the DIT. So um, this makes it flexible and you can um, even hook in your own uh, DIT registrars and resolvers, and, and once you've hooked those in, you can then start using them around um, uh, the framework for other features. So I hope this was helpful and um, that this helped you understand how you can use the DITS module to create and resolve DITS in Airframe JavaScript. Thank you.